Welcome again to another edition of Cultivating the Culture. And this week we're doing from the University of Timbuktu to the plantations of the South. And as always, usually we have uh, our brother Malcolm speak, but today we're going to start off with a Harvard professor, uh, Henry Gates, and he's going to basically talk and praise uh, the university and talk what our show is about. I've dreamed about coming to Timbuktu since that day when I first heard about this place. I see this courtyard is surrounded by black men with long gowns and turbans, which they received as their um, sign of their degree when they graduated. And each of them carrying books, this whole place surrounded by books, precisely when Europeans said that black Africans lacked the intellectual ability to ever to learn to read and write. This place, founded just about the time of the University of Paris, or the University of Bologna, or Charles in, in Prague, and fully 311 years before my own beloved Harvard, this place was brimming with 25,000 students and scholars gathered from all over black Africa and North Africa who had come here because this was Africa's great center of learning. It's enough to make you cry. Well, probably the most important of commercial exchanges. The most important thing to commerce was books. Yeah. Well, you see, that's important because the image of black Africa is that the people are illiterate traditionally. That doesn't happen at Geneva. So there's, no, there's no illiteracy in Geneva. This is probably the only town in Africa where you don't have one single illiterate person. Not one single illiterate person. Everyone in Genève knows how to read and write in Arab. Welcome back uh, from listening to our promo. And we had Henry Gates uh, speaking about his trip that he did to uh, Timbuktu, um, uh, praising it. And this is what our show is about today. What we're doing is uh, we're talking about Timbuktu. Timbuktu was uh, the, or the University of Timbuktu and just Mali Empire, Ghana Empire, and these are the places that we uh, were before. Always at the beginning of our show, we always talk about um, uh, who, who we are. Uh, uh, we're sponsored by <coughs> uh, Nation of Iman, or Umat al-Iman, which is our organization, and we do interfaith work, talking with people about faith, uh, belief in the Creator, uh, be belief in His angels, belief in His books, belief in His messengers, belief in the, uh, the, t the Qadar or determination, the belief in the last day. And then also, as you see back there, I have the shirt on. The shirt actually is in Arabic, and it says uh, Jamaat al Sijin, which is the congregation of the prison. But we're not just talking about prison. We're talking about the life of this world because the Prophet has said, Adunya Sijin al-Muhman wa Jannatul Kafir. He said the life of this world is a prison to the believer. And it's a uh, paradise uh, to those uh, that don't believe. So that's our prison ministry. And uh, we do a lot of work uh, trying to make a change uh, for the people. Um, so basically, what we're doing today, we're going over Timbuktu. Um, uh, Gates had a, a Henry Gates had a, a nice uh, uh, a documentary that he did, and he went over it. So we'll show segments from that. But right now, what we're going to do is show a segment from a BBC uh, uh, special that they had. It was called um, L The Lost Libraries of Timbuktu, and um, it's very informative. So um, listen to that for a while, and we'll come back. End of the 10th century, when Timbuktu was founded, a large part of West Africa was under the rule of the Ghana Empire. It was West Africa's first superpower, and its leaders were early converts to Islam. The spread of Islam was the compelling factor that changed history here and gave Africa its literary tradition. Islam spread from the Arabian Peninsula, from Egypt and then along the coast of North Africa. But some other Muslims came from the north, the ones who founded Timbuktu, and being traders, spread Islam from the Sahara to the south coast. The head librarian told me just how many turn up on a weekly basis. It's an impressive number. Every week we get about 700. 
six or seven hundred a week. Yes, per week. So when the manuscripts arrive here, the first thing we have to do is evaluate them to see what conditions they are in. We pick out all the best ones, but the ones that are too damaged, we put to one side. For me, my favorite ones are the ones in the African languages, but written with Arabic characters. They are called Ajami texts. Because I'm Sorai, when I see a manuscript in Sorai, it makes me happy. You have some manuscripts in Pearl, Sorai, Tamashek, all with Arabic characters that recount the history of Africa. In the wake of Islam, another commodity began to arrive with the camel trains. Books were soon being traded in Timbuktu's marketplaces as wealthy merchants found a new indulgence for their deep pockets and leisure time. Books greatly enhanced the status of their owners and gave the pious a deeper understanding of Islam. The profits of the book trade soon rivaled the trade in gold, salt and slaves. By the end of the 13th century, the prominent families of Timbuktu began to boast their own libraries and the sons of those families aspired not just to trade but to scholarship. Paper was imported from Europe and China and a new occupation swelled the ranks of the city's workforce. Calligraphers started copying Islamic texts from abroad as well as the work of the town's own scholars. Their labors were impressively rewarded. Nevertheless, it's wonderful to think that behind any of these walls could be yet another cache of undiscovered manuscripts. Though there's already more than enough to ensure a rethink of the history of this part of Africa in a new and dramatic way. To me, it has actually changed my, uh, my understanding. I'm much more proud to be an African, and I'm much more proud to be an African conservative, and more proud to be contributing towards the re-correction or rewriting of the African history. The Ahmed Baba, the Baba, the Baba, Baba Institute Baba. was born from the international conference organized by UNESCO in 1967, and the topic was the origins of African history. I repeat, the origins of African history. And what's the origins? Is the manuscripts. So with the Arabic manuscripts, the intention is to rewrite the history of Africa. Agree to show me some of his collection. Manuscripts on astronomy, medicine, and theology, including commentaries on the sayings of the prophet. These particular manuscripts date from around the 16th and 17th centuries. This one's been nibbled by termites. This is a really interesting manuscript about astronomy. These are the astronomic drawings showing the position of all stars. I'm not an expert, but that is what they tell us. Uh, they need more about it then than I do now. Yeah, it shows you how to calculate position of the stars using these letters and numbers. Next, he showed me a 16th century manuscript. So this is a text of the prophet's sayings. What's more, they are all these notes in the margin. They can be about anything. But this one talks about hygiene. If you eat something unclean, you will always have problems and complications with your health. And here's a 500-year-old recipe for toothpaste. You take some salt and some sugar and mix that together with some charcoal and brush it on your teeth every day, and your teeth will become white. And what's more, it will get rid of your bad breath. Welcome back. Um, so... Today we want to try to really get uh, participation. We're opening up the lines, 301-429-9247. Uh, That's 301-429-9247. Um, this is a, it's, it's a excellent subject. It's, we're going through Black History Month. And a lot of times here we talk about Black History Month, we focus on what's going on in the United States um, uh, from slavery. Or we'll go all the way back to... Uh, 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 the Egyptians 
and what was happening there. But as far as covering the subject of Timbuktu, um, people talk about Mansa Musa, and they really don't go into the subject. They don't really go into the university. And what we wanted to do is be able to focus on the university and the education level that our people had prior to coming here. Like uh, Gates had said, that uh, he had always been told that we were ignorant. And we still continue to be told that. We still actually believe that. We'll still even make silly jokes as though the Africans are uneducated. And that we were you know, happy to be saved uh, uh, and educated by these people. But one of the things is when I started looking into this, you know, of course we all heard about Timbuktu. And those that didn't, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it, I mean, like I said, I heard about it. Um, I studied it, you know, certain things, but I really didn't go into as much as I did uh, for the show. Um, when I started seeing all the works the, that they had preserved, I, I found some uh, information where it said there were over 70,000 um, manuscripts that have been maintained. So, and they had said when Timbuktu was taken over in uh, 1591 that the people, they focus on saving their books. They saved all of these manuscripts because when they w took them over, they took the gold, um, they took the manuscripts, they took the education, and, uh, and they took uh, slaves uh, with them when this happened. So, but to have uh, uh, in our culture, and this, this show is called Cultivating the Culture. Cultivating the Culture is trying to redevelop our culture to be one uh, of education, uh, one of, you know, of course, uh, belief in our creator. And this is a combination. This is a society, African society, that um, for basically for several hundred years um, was basically focused on that, focused on serving their creator, and a focus on education. And this is the direction that we, uh, we need to go back to. And it dispels the lies that have been told. I mean, uh, as I did my research, saw in the European, in Europe, you know, Europe, they had, um, they used to, like two thirds of the gold that uh, was being uh, sold around the world um, was coming from Africa. And Europe was uh, dependent on us. So. Um, there's many different books that they had that in Europe they knew about uh, Africa. They knew about Timbuktu, and it was this mystery place. So um, today, like I said, we're trying to get uh, uh, people to call in. I'm actually going to uh, play again um, uh, Gates. Um, he had a, a second part from his special, and I'm going to play that uh, so you can also hear a little bit more from People that are outside the Muslim community or regular community, but these are historians. Historians going to 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 these locations and talking about how great this place is. So, um, can you put that on? Thank you. Guide Ali Sidi is an Islamic scholar. According to historians, this university was counting twenty-five thousand students. Twenty-five thousand students. Yeah. Huh. What did they study? Well, they studied you know, Fields like uh, uh, astronomy, uh, literature, uh, Islamic sciences, uh -huh. the Quran, the mathematics, uh, medicine, uh, medicine, yeah, traditional medicine. So they would study in these rooms. They were, st they were studying in these rooms do, uh, in the morning, uh -huh. and the, in the afternoon, of courses are given in that court. In the court. How long did it take to get through well, the upper level? It's about uh, 10 years. So that's and like getting a BA, bachelor's degree yeah. and then a PhD yeah. today. And once you get graduated, you get your diploma mm -hmm. and you also get the traditional turban. A turban? Yeah. Now, would the scholars come from all over black Africa or they mostly from, from Mali? From uh, black Africa, mm. from West Africa. Mm -hmm. And most of them were taken in charge by the local population and by traditional chiefs. This book is about poetry. It's about poetry. Poetry. The author is using local languages. African languages. Yeah, African languages. In like 16th Kula. century. And the second part of the book is dealing with astronomy. Yeah. Astronomy. You know, astronomy was well used in the 16th century. The Tuareg still is astronomy. Yeah. 
This is about mathematics. Mathematics? <laughs> yeah. Algebra or geometry or what? Mm, I think it's more about accounting. Accounting? Yeah. Spoke to us having uh, the trade, trans, the transaction trade. Mm -hmm. This one. What's it about? Uh, this manuscript is dealing with the slavery history. Slavery? Yeah. Oh. Each correspondence is a document. It's giving uh, elements about the price or the cost of, a of the person. Yeah, of a person. Huh. You, uh, Hydra, my ancestors were slaves. They could be in this book. Can you see if there are any Gateses in here? <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Or her name? Gates, Abdul Gates. Gates. <laughs> Abdul Gates. <laughs> it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And these are books written by black people. Uh, some of them were, were written by, uh, mm. by black people. When I was growing up, that, school books said. I'm going to tell you that here in, in Timbuktu, we had big black scholars. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you at least one example. During the 16th century, we had Ahmed Baba, uh -huh. who wrote at least 60 volumes. 60 himself? 60 himself. Mm. Yeah. That's great. But when I was growing up, the school books said Africans couldn't read and write, didn't have any books, and here this great library exists. Yeah, indeed it is. Uh, I cannot, he cannot say that Africans do not write. Mm. Yeah, I know. Because he saw too many authors who are from Africa. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. And this is not this, the only place they are keeping books. They have another library. Mm. In Timbuktu. Yeah, in Timbuktu. The mind of the black world locked into the pages of these priceless books. Evidence of a grand civilization, untranslated and unknown. To tell the truth, I've always half feared that Timbuktu would prove to be a mirage. Just another story spun by those brothers back home in the barbershop. Welcome back. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to make sure that I showed you on video, because a lot of times people will talk about Timbuktu as though it's a fantasy. People will talk about the yesteryears of when we uh, were kings, and but really not show any proof. And like I said, this is uh, from a Harvard professor. The other one is from BBC, showing that our people that came here prior to us turning into slaves and property for people uh, had universities, uh, universities that had up to 25,000 uh, students in, at this one university, um, had a degree program where people were learning and had scribes. And then also using the Arabic language and the Arabic language to be able to write in their own language. So uh, with Fulani, Walaf, whatever the language was, so they, they use an the Arabic character. Like today, we speak English, but um, and we use the what they call Roman characters. But if you speak French, you still use the same characters. If you uh, speak German, you still use the same characters. And that's what they, they did in, in uh, Timbuktu in West Africa. So they were able to, to write uh, and now today, in order to have those many books, you can print them out and they come out on the printing press. Mm -hmm. But back during that time, to have those many books, you had to constantly be writing. To be a scribe was, was honorable. This is us. You know, the people that said that we were dumb animals that we came. And it's, it's kind of unfortunate that so many times when our historians, they talk about us, they'll mention Timbuktu, but they don't talk about the greatness of it. They don't talk about the university. They don't talk about us being educated. They don't talk about our degree program. And they sure don't talk about Islam. And, you know, I asked the question, why is that? And um, what I, I actually, when I posted it today, I got uh, somebody saying, uh, yeah, it was funny. They, 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 they said the regular rhetoric that I always hear, oh, well, yeah, the reason why they, um, 
became Muslim because they were enslaved. No, that's not the case. You know, what happened is in the eight eight nineties, um, uh, Arab uh, it, it spread. People uh, came around and they were because of the River Niger, uh, and it um, was a trade route, and people used that. And at the bend, this was where they they said that the river or the canoes would meet the camels, and then they would travel. And so the people liked the way that the Muslims were dealing. So the Ghanaian Empire was the first one. And they had accepted Islam on their own, not by force, not the lies that the people tell. So please, 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 please investigate. And then after the uh, Ghanaian Empire, um, then came the Mali Empire. And the Mali Empire, um, they, they, uh, had, they were Muslims. And, um, and, they, and they grew. And then, of course, the university was, was established. But here it is. These are dynasties of people that were educated, that were reading. Uh, they said that uh, Timbuktu was, uh, in its heyday, was twice the size of London. Twice the size of London. Now, did you see that in your uh, Tarzan movies or Jane movies or coming back to Africa, all of these other things that they want to show? Well, come back to Africa. They tried to do something better. But most of the time, when they show us, they show Africa in that way. They show that we were illiterate. And that is why they really made sure that we could not read. That's why it became illegal. Excuse me. Hold on for a second. Okay. They told me to answer the phone. I guess uh, they answered it. But that is why they, they stressed so much that we couldn't read. You know, the importance of us not being able to read because they knew of our history. And then when we finally got a chance to be free, we still really didn't understand that, that great history that we had to be able to return back to where we were and to, to see for that dominance. You're talking about basically over 500 years from 1,000 to 1,500s, you know, 1500s, um, we had this type of scholarship amongst ourselves. So uh, we need to start to really return back to that culture. I know we had a call. Let me try to see if I can get this call. Hello? Okay, hold on for a second. I'll try to put you on speaker. Hello? It hung me up. It's gone. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to get this phone situation, please. But I want you to, to come on, uh, give, a, give us a call, 301-429-9247. Trying to uh, work the phone lines. Um, but, uh, yeah, trying to work the phone lines. But like I said, so I, during my research for this, this uh, 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 show um, on our, our History Month, or our, our uh, Black Story Month, you know, um, instead of His History Month or whatever, Our Story Month, um, I, I found out, you know, so much information as far as um, that the Europeans knew, you know, um, that they weren't able to penetrate this area until the 1800s. There were prizes that people were getting to be able to try to get it to Timbuktu because they guarded this place. Um, uh, and it was, it was, it was such a, a strong hold um, that, that they had. And then also there's a, another book where everybody knows Leo Africanus, but Leo Africanus was really not his name. But in that book, uh, The History of Africa, um, he, or, or Geography of Africa, he actually goes into detail. And if you read it, they're praising Africa. They're praising black Africans. Hello? Hello? Okay, hold on for a second. Hello? Yes. Um, hold on for a second. Hello? Hold on for a second. Let's put you on hold. Got it. Hello? Yes, I should make a comment. All right, got it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. No, I was just saying that how... Uh, what is your name? I'm sorry. What is your name? Uh, I just kind of got nervous. Uh, Lisa. I'm calling from D.C. Lisa. Okay, thank you, Lisa. How are you? Fine. I just wanted to say I think it's great what you're doing in reference to uh, teaching us about our history and education. 
But we, as uh, African Americans, one, we have to associate, like if you have Chinese Americans, they'll say their heritage is from China. But if you talk to African Americans, they won't say associate with Africa because of the miseducation of our African ancestry. So it's important for programs such as yourself where we are, we have to re-educate. And it starts, I guess, from our, our homes or, or what we can do in teaching our children. But because they're not going to teach it in the schools. They're not going to, you know, have those things available. Because America has been about the miseducation of black people. So, um, you know, it's good that you're focusing on that, and, and especially with Henry Gates, he does a lot of great work. Right. Had you had seen that, um, his uh, some of his things that he's out? I know, um, he, uh, have you seen any? Oh, yeah, I've seen several document, um, uh, uh, documentations that he's done on various different topics. He's really profound, and anyone watching this program really need to Google him and, and find out informative um, information about African Americans and our ancestry. But, um, yeah, that's... That, um, that's why we use them um, because a lot of people are familiar with them and they're comfortable. A lot of times when we're giving information, people are doubting and, and people really don't do research. And that's what we try to encourage on the show is that people uh, do the research. Um, it's important for us to be able to, to know our real history, to be able to um, uh, make this change. Um, you know, we have some great people, but the information is, 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 is not getting out there. Like even last week we did Martin Luther King uh, speeches and going through that, I, I got re-educated or educated more on his statements. And this is what we have to do is we're encouraging going back to our history, learn our history. And as the brother even said on the show, by having the manuscripts, they're able to go, uh, they're reading, writing, rewriting the history or writing the history that w was there by us as opposed to the history that's being put by others. And most of the sources that we use of African-American today um, is sources created by the European that he's presented today, not by the European that he presented, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, 700 years ago, 700 years ago, they uh, praises. I remember this book called Black Athena. And Black Athena, they actually talk about the changing uh, once the, uh, of of the blacks or Africa being the the the, the main place um, of knowledge and and in the center to Europe being it and your uh, Europeanizing everything. So so I, I mean I appreciate it. Um, I'm just doing my part, and what we try to do is encourage others to you know uh, do their part, and and that is to spread this message to uh, raise up leadership. Um, and to, to, like you said, use Google, you know, use Google and use other sources to be able to yeah, find information. I did, I did have a question, that I, didn't, I don't know if you can answer, but it's something I want to look up. But I noticed that it was, the writing was from uh, right east to west, but then did it become, um, with England, where it goes west to east? In the, in the writing, and does that have anything to do with, no. East That's or West? another topic, I'm sorry. No, I mean, well, they write, they write from, they from right here, yeah. which is, mm -hmm. you know, when you're looking, it depends on where you're looking at. If you're looking at, at the at the north, you know, then, yeah, my right to left is east to, east to West. But if you're going from the south, then it's the other direction. So, um, but we write, in Arabic, we write. In Arabic, we write from right to left. And, um... And, you know, of course, as in English, you write from left to right. It's the opposite direction as far as the Arabic. Um, but, but also Arabic script. So, um, like, the thing that was amazing was that they were using their own local languages and they would use the script, which is a better way to learn the Arabic um, um, or to, to, is to use Arabic writing for your own regular writing and stuff. So that's all. That's, that's, that, that's what's happening with that. I mean, did you have any other questions? No, thank you, and continue the great work. Okay, I appreciate it, and peace be with you. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad I have some uh, people calling in. We want to try to start engaging a, a little bit more uh, with the people. I mean, our number is 301-429-9247. That's 301 429 
four seven. And um, this being Black History Month, or you know, our, our Black All Story Month, we um, uh, are really encouraging people to take the time out and not go through the regular uh, things that we do uh, 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 about individuals. Let's start studying, you know, a lot of these uh, uh, great people, uh, a lot of our great societies, and find out, you know, what type of things that we can do um, to 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 return to that. So going back uh, to uh, Timbuktu. So Timbuktu, after the the Mali Empire took over, um, um, that's when that was part of the establishment of the un university. But um, uh, uh, um, and everybody do all we talk about Mansa Musa and many people know as far as Mansa Musa um, you know what he did they would talk about how much the wealth he had how much when he uh, went to his Hajj that he had 15 tons of gold 15 tons of gold is a lot of gold 15 tons of gold that he took on him uh, with him and people focus on the amount of gold and the amount of people he had as though it's the modern day today um, or the Romans or the Europeans where they're showing off well, Mansa Musa was a, a, a wise leader, and he knew by bringing that with him, he was able to, along the way, be able to change the economy of all the places and also set up an infrastructure and a trade route. They increased that trade route and to make it a safer uh, uh, travel for other people that were being able to go to, to Hajj because instead of just being a, a uncharted uh, a path or road from Mali all the way to Mecca. Because of that, it created an economy and along the whole way, and they had cities and other places to be able to in, in, increase that uh, trade route. And then when he went to Egypt, they said that he had so much gold that um, he and he had given it away. And this is how it's supposed to be. This is this is the the example that 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 was set from Africa, and we don't really hear about it. You know, it saddens me sometimes when I look at how we as you know Muslims or people talk about um, the history of the Muslims and we'll talk about Spain right up there you know uh, north of the Sahara but from us it'll have to be us blacks talking about Timbuktu it should be all Muslims it should be all Muslims it shouldn't be like that you know we talk about in Ottoman Empire African Americans we praise the Ottoman Empire we, we talk about Spain we talk about you know Khan, Khan. we talk about all of them so since, you know, it has to be everybody's talking about Timbuktu. Everybody's uh, praising Timbuktu for the things that not just the African-American. Because when it, what it does, it turns into a thing as though we're just uh, talking about a race. But no, we're talking about a great Muslim society that uh, 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 dominated for, you know, uh, as far as Islamic excellence, Islamic knowledge for several hundred years. And then one of the beautiful things of the Africans uh, in Mali is that when they took Islam because they were not warring people. And a lot of times, you know, people always associate Islam with warring people um, because we're looking at the people from places where they're, they're constantly in wars. You know, that's how it is, that situation. But Timbuktu, the nature of the people, and West Africa, Mali, those places, um, the nature was different. It wasn't a warring land. And so when uh, they had the, this religion, they got into religion. They learned the religion. They absorbed the religion, and they weren't uh, fighting each other. And so um, it is important for us to, to, to really focus. I was talking earlier about um, when I, I posted it, I got somebody with the uh, regular quotes um, that they do. Oh, like I said, that, you know, we enslaved what is it? He said. They said that we ins that the the Arabs. This is their favorite thing. They say yes. The Arabs are uh, forced us with the religion, which is false. Broke that down. They said that um, that as talking about slavery. And I mentioned to the guy. I mentioned to him. I said, well, the reality about slavery. We have American chattel slavery. The type of slavery. There's never been this type of slavery anymore. Anywhere. Anywhere. How vicious, how they were, you know, the, what, the, what they did, how they just had, un, they didn't have walls. They just did it for the purpose of, of uh, taking uh, people and, and using them, abusing them. Um, you know, this period of time, slavery would happen uh, in other places with wars. When you have a war, you have a war with somebody, you either kill them or you take them as a slave. That's your prisoner of war. That's been going on for a long time. 
but they had rights. They treated them a different way. And this is things we like to run away from to say that it never happened. No. But was that the intent? Did they go with the intent? I'm going to go attack these people to make it my property. You know, those that did, they were ill-willed. And this is not Islam. Islam doesn't do that. But in war, in the situations, if you 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 you, you, you have your opposition, do they kill them? No, they don't. They they um, they take them as slaves. And unfortunately, you have this this issue still going on. But um, most of these the Muslims in in uh, Mali, Timbuktu, these the the Mandinkas, you know the the the, the Songhai, all of these empires, African empires, and you know um, today. We're hearing about, uh, I, I hold up, somebody uh, had asked, uh, again, they just uh, signaled for me to uh, say the number again. Numbers 301-429-9247. 301-429-9247. So going back to it, um, uh, I was looking for the questions. Hold up for one second. Yes, here it is. Thanks. Yeah, the statement, the guy said, this is a regular thing. He said, um, when I posted about how Timbuktu for uh, 500 years, um, they were the leaders in, uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, literature and um, uh, literary works. The guy said, uh, this is great, but Timbuktu adopted Islam to establish trade with the Arabs from uh, being enslaved by Arabs. Okay, so I had to break that down, which that's not the case. And a lot of uh, Afrocentrists, a lot of black people that are not Muslims are uh, always pushing that point. And so I said, Timbuktu, I, I said your statement is incorrect. Timbuktu adopted Islam to establish um, trade with the Arabs and from, and, uh, oh, I mean, they, I said, this is false. The Ghanaian uh, kingdoms were a series of centralized kingdoms or empires that were centered on the um, cell and the areas of the grasslands south of the Sahara. From the 8th century, the wealth of the states came from controlling the trade routes across the deserts, and they did not accept Islam because they were slaves. They accepted Islam because most of these people were from a monotheic uh, way of life. You know, a lot of times we're talking about Africa as though everybody practices voodoo, or everybody practiced animalism or something of the sort. But there were many people that still practiced the worship in the one God. One of the things in Islam, we believe that God sent a messenger to every people. The issue is, have they preserved the message in the original form? And there's uh, very few where they actually preserved it um, in the original form. Um, actually, Islam is the only one directly from its prophet. We have bits and parts that remain. But when the message came to these people, because many of these people had been worshiping uh, the Creator, uh, when they saw Islam, they accepted Islam, and they just... Uh, they accepted and they made it their way of life. The second statement that he said is, uh, he said the irony uh, because of this is that the black Muslim Moors who betrayed Timbuktu and other West African nations that led to the trans translated s slave. Uh, Morocco actually is the country that attacked Timbuktu in 1591. And um, when they went in, you know, they rampaged, they, they, they stole the gold. Um, and they, they, they did do this. And one of the things I pointed out to him is that, uh, says, uh, he said, the Quran is the guide for Islam and not the actions of people who take uh, their shahada. So the Quran is our guide. The Quran is, is what guides us. So we don't judge our religion by the actions of what people do. So because these people did it, does that mean that that's Islam? No, that means that Muslims did uh, uh, this action, like I always tell them, or the Arabs, you know, may uh, do some action. Um, uh, Muslims or so-called Arabs um, killed uh, some of the com uh, companions, killed, uh, uh, what's it, Uthman, killed Ali, killed, um, um, what is it, uh, Umar. They were killed by who? By Arabs. So, uh, are we praising Arabs? No, we're praising the religion. The religion is the guidance. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran say to do that? No, he did not. So when he came at that, I said, the creator of existence told the Muslims in Surah 4, verse 91, that anyone who kills a Muslim intentionally will receive four things, that they will be in the hellfire forever, that they will have Allah's anger, that they will have the curse of Allah, and they will receive a per terrible punishment in the next life. So, you know, because uh, another Muslim nation went and killed some other Muslims, 
Does that mean that that's Islam? No, they were incorrect. And actually, when I studied it, you find out that Morocco, the, the, they were having wars amongst each other. And they, were, they had kings, and they were fighting. And one son to another son. So when the king at that time, he had built a, a, a palace. And this palace that he had, you know, he spent so much money, you know, on it. And so then he sent a, a eunuch, you know, that was a, a Roman or a Spaniard that, uh, uh, to be the general to go fight the Muslims. So, no, this is not Islam. People need to understand the difference between Islam and the Muslims or Arabs or other people that uh, profess Islam. So Islam did not, uh, uh, Islam elevated the Africans. And this is our history. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, he said, do not let the hate of a people cause you to be unjust. And I wonder sometimes, what is the hate? Why is it that uh, non-Muslims or so many people, they know the history. They know this history, but because it's Islam, they won't tell it. They know the history. These, they, 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 they know this is a beautiful thing to find out that we as Africans, you know, um, before we came here, that we had universities, that we, were, um, that we knew how to write, that we knew how to read, that we learned science, that we learned astrology, that we learned math, we learned all these things. But because it's, 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 it's Muslims, or, you know, the Africans were Muslims, or it's Islam, you know, it has to be attacked, you know. So... Um, then the next question that the next statement that he has said, he said, um, Islam is not ours. He said, Islam is not ours, um, nor is Judaism, nor is Christianity. These, these are not ours. And I had to say, you know, um, the answer is Islam didn't start with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Islam started with Adam. Peace and blessed be upon him. Started from the beginning and Adam was made from black blood. And as everybody says, that the original man came from Africa, so we know what's happening with uh, where that is and stuff. Then the next thing he says, um, um, as far as uh, Judaism, with Moses, where did Moses live? Where is Moses from? Where does Judaism come from? It starts where? From Egypt, because that's where when Moses received his revelation. Where was he in Egypt? And if you go back four thousand years and you go to the museums and um, Egypt and you walk down the corridors and you see the dynasties during, during that time. These are black and brown people during it, and so, and that's in the history. But here it is, the misconcept, you know, that uh, Judaism is used to destroy it. No, people taking our faith, taking the history of our people, and using it for themselves, and to be able to, to, to go against us. Then, following into that, when he talked about Christianity, the message of Jesus, when, uh, w when his mother was pregnant, where did she go? She went to Egypt. The message of Jesus, when Jesus left, when he was elevated, when he said, Raphael, when he was elevated up into the heavens and he left, you know, what, what happened? His disciples, they went to North Africa. And if you see one of the, the earlier churches, the earlier churches were in North Africa. But what happens is we take the Roman version. That's what we have today. And the Romans, they came with their version and they're dealing with us and they're teaching us Christianity. And so we're rejecting. We're rejecting our own history, you know, because this is a history of what? North Africa. So, you know, this is the thing that we have to come back. We have to be able to start being educated. When we start doing this Black History Month, it shouldn't just be focusing on what they've been giving us. We should be able to focus on our, our own history. And like I said, Timbuktu and the universities, the worst that they have, they had um, the our history in Arabic language, but or use an Arabic script in African languages. And it's not the history that you're getting today. Or um, And then... Um, he has said, he said, uh, when are we ever going to learn that the Abrahamic religions were used to enslave us? Well, that would mean we be learning a, a lie. You know, I mean, the reality is people are going to use, they're not using the religion, they're using their version of the truth. And people are always going to distort the truth and try to uh, put it in their own way. So going back to it, like I said, with Simba 2, there's a, um, um, we, need to, we need to be able to study. We need to be able to return back um, to, to, to having this level of uh, a scholarship. So, like I said, today I am really wanted to be able to have um, people to call in 301-429-9247. So, uh, continue. One of the things when I talked about um, uh, Morocco... There was a, the king, his name was Ahmed al-Mansur, and he was a sultan, and he actually ended up um, dying of the plague and stuff. But this is uh, the, the individual that, you know, 
went and um, uh, uh, took over or destroyed um, uh, Timbuktu. But the amazing thing was, was today when someone comes in other places, when someone comes to ravage a land of war, they hide their, their assets. They hide their, their, I mean, they hide their money. They hide their, their, their things of financial value. In Timbuktu, when these people came, they hid their books. And these books remain hidden for, you know, basically almost 500 years. It wasn't until 1960 that um, when uh, Mali got its freedom, um, and then you started to see some of the, the works surfacing. As he said, that you're that at that library, 700 manuscripts a day are coming out. They're coming back. And, you know, so just as we praise the Chinese about 5,000 years and their knowledge and all of that, we have to start praising ourselves. We have to start looking and, and stop discriminating against the Islam, you know, because it's Muslims. We have to look at it as, you know, the, the African history. This is us. This is our greatness. This is what we were before we came here. So think about these scholars to come to these lands, to come to America and then be property, to be able to to have the education. There's several different books that we have by uh, people that were um, slaves or property, and um, they, they talk about their experience. They talk about the education that they had. Matter of fact, even um, on some of the readings, there were they had uh, where um, Africans from the the or West Africa they had the time um, the Muslims they had come here uh, to the Americas and when I read Christopher Columbus log he talks about that his navigators uh, were from uh, West Africa there because they had traveled here before so um, during this Black History Month let's start going a little further um, let's. Uh, Let's 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 increase our, our, our knowledge. And next week, um, what we're gonna have is we're gonna talk about uh, um, um, Marcus Garvey, uh, Paul Robeson, and uh, Frederick Douglass. Um, I know a lot of people are talking about you know other people, and we have a lot going on. So we want to talk about those individuals, and we want to also bring up you know some of their speeches, some of their statements, because we can be able to learn. Uh, from the from the past and then at the end of this month um actually on or the 21st we're going to go over uh malcolm and malcolm's uh, uh malcolm's death hold on for a second let me try to answer hello hi um i don't have a question i just have a statement okay what is your name tracy okay thank you for calling in <laughs> yeah i'm just glad you're doing a show on this um this is evidence that uh, the one and only God was worshipped by our people, and not just Egypt, um, you know, when Amun-Ra came along, but, um, you know, basically, you know, Islam. Islam is not, um, you know, just for the Arabs, you know, and um, it, it also, you know, lets us know the true origins of knowledge is power. You know, they, the books were, you know, a a real commodity and um you know this is something to you know this this show is definitely something great to like go back and review and, and look at what what we were doing and what we came over as you know muslims and not just you know some people who you know um you know made you know did voodoo or you know anything like that you know because basically they were great people you know, they were great people who were Muslim, and, you know, they believed in education. So, I'm glad. Yeah, no, don't go. And that's why, I mean, it's one of the things is um, that's that's one of the reasons that they made sure that we couldn't read, um, because they knew, you know, the, the power that we had and stuff. And it's funny, I, like you said, you mentioned, you know, Egypt. Uh, Egypt, the, the 4,000 years ago, we're talking about Africa, and we're going back 4,000 years ago when we're kings and we don't know hieroglyphics we don't have the information preserved but here it is over just 500 years ago we have this information and so it should be that all of us are blacks whether you're muslim christian or whatever if you love your history we should be talking about that we should be talking about how great we are and once we realize our greatness then we will never reduce ourselves 
down to anything. And we have always been the people that have believed in the Creator, you know. Uh, uh, um, and so I, it's it saddens me when I see this these, these lies where they're pushing that you know we are only you know doing voodoo or witch doctors or you know, talking with jinn or or these type of things, you know. And that show that version of, of Africa. Like I said, if you're talking about from you know the 800s or you know 900s all the way into you know the 15 1600s you know you have this uh belief in the one god and tawhid uh the oneness of the creator that's a very long time uh uh for that to be a a part of our culture and this is black africa not this is south of the sahara you know and from from the west coast to the the east coast there was uh, many of us and stuff and so many of us came here uh with that belief and out of fact even uh, this, they, they made it illegal for uh, them to even allow Muslims to come because we continue to fight, you know, uh, and, and uh, even in Haiti, Haiti got its freedom because of the Muslims uh, there fighting um, and, um, you know, many other uh, places in the islands. That's what we do because we, we never gave up. And so, you know, um, but I appreciate I appreciate I'm glad you like this show. I mean, this is a, a show not for the exaltation of myself or anything. It is be able to, to try to raise our people up, to get our people to start, you know, uh, uh, studying more. As uh, we talked about, you know, at the beginning, usually we have Malcolm. And Malcolm says that a person has to be able to learn to think for yourself. Because if you can't think for yourself, you're going to be headed east when you think you're headed west. And you're going to be headed west when you think you're headed east. So um, we're trying to get the people... To be able to think and also when we looked at the laws in america where they had separate but um equal that's what started segregation but it was really separate but unequal for so long but now we have an equalizer we have these phones and we need to put them to use and take them away from your children and and only you know program it so they can be able to do deal with education to educate themselves instead of you know using that as a babysitter knowing that um, somebody's going to lead them astray but I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, we want to try to encourage uh, more people to call. So maybe next show, if you have any questions, give us a call again. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, no. That or statements? That's it. Thank you for what you're doing. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, too. Okay. Well, I'm glad that uh, people are appreciating the show. Like I said, you know, it's our intent to try to raise up another generation or a next generation um, of, of thinkers, of leaders. And we have now a nice baseline that we can start from, you know, um, to see where we were before. Maybe we can have another 500 years of, of educational dominance, you know, in this world. And we can start right here where we are, you know. We need to be able to set ourselves free. Uh, too many times I hear people say they, 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 you know, who is they? Are we puppets and they just lift us up by the string and we got to do whatever they say do you know if they set a trap for you oh you got to run to the trap like a rat oh there's some cheese i'm gonna go get it you know there's some drugs i'm gonna go sell it you know we're not rats you know so we have to be able to to to, to rise above we live here in america and um we need to be able to to unify as like i said martin luther king said malcolm x said all of the great leaders that we have to be able to unify because we are one people and one thing is, we do know we, we are one people. We just have to act like we are one people. And we have one interest. And we have one aim and one goal. And that is for the success of ourselves, success of our family, success and success of our nation. You know, so peace be with you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Paz contigo in Spanish. Um, salam land to your home <laughs> in Aramaic. Thank you. See you next week.